Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalyze of Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, and we're going to be starting with another 6v6. I know I mentioned last week that we wouldn't be doing another 6v6 so soon, but this one's kind of short. So, yeah. Bit of a shorter game, but it's still a big game, and Stu is up differently today. So, we start out with Luke Terrence on on rovers, Chesty on air, Fireplug on gunships. Ooh, a lot of known players. Mookie Man on power plants, as with Joselius and or mostly as Munoz, and lastly on the red team Isaride going in with hovercraft. While on the other hand, we have the Northwest team with Captain going jump bots, and bot factor but by KDTM. Mop Mop going for cloakies, tanks being set up by Itsuri and Atostic rounding it out with hovercraft, alongside average plan. So, this map is, as you can see, pretty choke pointy, pretty water heavy. I'm a little bit surprised we actually are only seeing water built in earnest by the people on the north side. I mean, we do have Izzeride's factory over to the south, the hovercraft platform. But otherwise, there is a bit of an advantage going in immediately with the northwest team having a hovercraft factory and an amphibot factory. Well, two hovercrafts and an amphibot factory. Which is making me wonder exactly how the southeast team plans to get in on this. Because at this point, the southeast team is going to be great for defense and they have an air factory, which... In fairness, is not something their opponents have, actually. Yeah, and the entire north side has not gone for an air star whatsoever. So if an air factory and a gunship factory by the southeast side, that seems to be their plan at this point. Just get in with heavy gunships and air units and try to wreck face that way. I'm curious to see how that's going to work. At this point, I think it's probably going to be okay. We have a little bit of scouting coming in here. From Whose sparrow is that? That's red? That is Mookie Man Sparrow. So at this point in the Southeast team, they have more knowledge. The Northwest team has way more in the way of ground forces and sea forces. It'll be a little bit easier for their... A little bit easier for the Northwest team to actually get going properly. Sorry, easier for them to get going. It'd be harder for them to avoid getting hit on all sides, but again, they can attack from basically any direction. They're going to be walking a bunch of ducks in over here. Actually, they're going to be walking a bunch of ducks into nothing. There's no defenses whatsoever. This is going to be bad. This is going to be very bad for the Southeast team. I don't see them easily dealing with this. Same time with the North, with the Pyros coming to the top. Those have been pushed away. So, only really one major attack. But still, that's going to be an attack that's going to be a real problem. And Ducks coming in here, getting rid of one of the Quills on Reclaim Duty. And that... This... That is going to put Southeast down to the slight disadvantage when it comes to economy. Not much, though. Overall... Both teams are relatively even and fairly reclaim heavy. Although, ooh, Southeast team actually losing a lot of energy. Southeast team is relying a lot more on overdrive right now. That being said, it is, as, as it is with team games, there is a bit of a opening that's, you know, there's an opening that just sort of takes a little while to set up. Everyone gets along the front lines. And granted, this match is starting out pretty quick with a lot of damage on the reclaimers. Same thing with the Engineer over for Average Plan getting taken out. So, again, Reclaim not really being allowed by either side. Though defenses coming here for the Ducks are a little bit weak. I'm surprised we're not seeing any follow-up. Like I said, the defenses are weak. This Duck could walk right in here and just wipe everything out. I mean, there are Nats coming in to try to help out, but this is a lot that could be destroyed. I'm really surprised we aren't seeing KDTM just go for it. Just take that kill. And they could probably get rid of a factory or two, honestly, with that many Ducks. Even with the Nats coming here, I mean, the timing is definitely... It's it's getting farther and farther away from being plausible. But, yeah, there was a timing. It's long since passed. But there was a timing. At the same time, M -M -M working to claim the center with a Razor. Or at least trying to. I mean, it more or less worked. At least kept them safe well enough to get that reclaim. So, at the very least, the Northwest team does have a bit more reclaim. Does mean they have a little bit more in the way of economy. The South team... Again, they are reclaiming, and if we look at the actual amount of reclaim available... Oh, wait, I can't see the reclaim flashing. Apparently, I do not count as having Constructor selected, which... That sucks. Okay. I have it set up to show me reclaim at the start of the game when Constructors are selected, or at least I thought I did. But again, it might be when my Constructors are selected, not necessarily anyone's Constructors, which doesn't make sense. But alright, whatever. At any rate, Southeast team, this is where their air factory is going to come in. This is the this is the fire pluck way. Go for, I mean, granted, it is Chesty going for this, not fire pluck. But still, go for a risky strategy, see if that'll work. And then, especially air-based, like bomber strategy or something like that. See what you can do with that. 
That is not a bad idea, all things considered. Again, they've clearly the North Southeast team has decided air is their game, air is their battleground. They are seeding the sea in favor of the sky. And I don't agree with that, but I do I do really look forward to seeing how it plays out. Big problem here though is that we can't have the rape rapture. Rapiers can't hit underwater. Gunships in general can't hit underwater. Ravens can, but no, everything else here is kind of just hooped. They just can't interact because the water. All this water in the way. Alas. Alas, poor Amph oh, Alas, poor hovercraft. I mean, not hovercraft. They'd be dead. Alas, poor gunships. You can't do shit. <laughs> well, and actually, I mean that. These. Well, okay, there's a little bit of damage being done. If the urchins can get gotten rid of, that will at least allow for nothing, actually. I don't really understand what the point of this was at all. Actually. I mean, that was... That was very bizarre. I guess Firepluck wanted to see what was going on, but again, scouting is cheap. Like, you, you don't have to throw away four Banshees to scout. You can just attack. Same time, the Rapier's over the south, though. This is a last poor hovercraft. Hover's not really able to do much. The, the Flails are certainly doing a decent job, but really the main problem here is that the Halberds... The Halberds are are tanking most of the Salvo, but it doesn't even matter. The Rapier's able to get in, able to deal quite a lot of damage at the same time. Fireblock, I mean, you're able to... Get the Rapier Command... No, there's got a Rapier from Radar. Not really a whole lot there, but the, this is still... Fireblock doing a ton of damage with a bunch of Rapiers. Trying to find the key targets, which... Uh, this is one of them, and I think... Not sure if it's above water enough to hit. I think... Considering the the flight path of ra of rapier missiles, it probably wouldn't hit. It probably hit the terrain next to it, so it's fine. It's safe. But that's still a fairly strong attack, and I do like the fact that fireblock, or I like the fact that fireblock seem to be retreating. Fireblock, I like your retreat. You might want to get out of there. There's a flail right there. You don't want to be fighting it. Like for your own sake, don't fight that flail, if you can help it. At any rate, that's coming in at the same time as close tremors or cloaks. Artillery in general. I mean, irises, as a rule, have really seen a lot of increased use. Like, I remember one of those first you know, small things, like using a bunch of fire, using a bunch of irises to get a bunch of reavers into your opponent's base, and now it's just iris as the way to handle the front line. Your opponent just can't see it, which is pretty cool. And I was wrong, actually. No, the rapiers are able to hit this advanced geo plant just fine. They will, however, die in the process of killing it. But that's a very strong kill. It gets rid of the entire northern base, pretty much. Wipe, well, wipes out a decent chunk of Atostic's energy, but Northwest, while they are lower on energy and thus lower on reclaim, or sorry, overdrive, it's not a huge difference. Like 10 metal per second. The main problem, of course, is a lot of metal, metal extractors were lost. That was a big blow. And at the same time, Halberds are threatening, but again, these are contains that aren't going anywhere. Northwest is trying to contain the sea, and Southeast does not want to contest it. Southeast doesn't care. The only sea player available here is at, is Izzeride with the hovercraft, and they're fighting on the front lines. They are the only ones actually able to go on the water. And honestly, the way they are right now, they could bypass a lot of the defenses that have been set up anyway. But no one in the back lines is going to have to deal with these Anthbots. The Anthbots could have come in and started dealing damage, but it's way too late. They're not storming this beach. It's done. So, I'm not really sure the Northwest strategy is, considering that the Southeast team is entirely air-based. Now, Northeast, there's Northwest, they've clued in. They're getting a hub, they're getting flails. They're getting getting other anti air. Probably shouldn't, but flails are definitely the way to go. And that's that's all they need. Just get enough flails to make the air no longer really a viable option. And they have the chainsaws as well. So it is gonna be a way of getting around this, which means the southeast team needs to find some way in that actually allows them to deal the damage needed to get in. And I don't know what's gonna happen. Ampbot's coming in with a with a nice terraformed ramp. I like that we don't see enough terraform ramps in this game, but when we do, it is high impact like this. This is the thing I was talking about before. These ducks and scallops could have done loads of damage earlier, and they're finding a way to do loads of damage now, so not to waste. Hovercraft Factor is going to go down very shortly. Pretty much everything that Israelite's built up is doomed. This Lance trying everything it can to try to stop this, but it's not going to be able to deal with a lot of light units. It's too slow firing, and honestly, just too focused on damage. Not to mention too... Oh. Dead. Oh! Oh! Izzerite's commander accidentally getting in the way of the tachyon beam. Not the safest way to go. Unfortunately, that does happen sometimes when you have long firing units like that. They can sometimes hit things in the way. 
just the way that the targeting priority works, they try, it, the game tries to make sure that something won't hit anything of yours when it's firing initially. But if stuff moves in a long, like a long drawn out attack, like the lance shot, then it can actually cause people or cause units to get hit as they move into the beam. Which is exactly what happened to that commander. And at this point, it's basically just, it looks like it's essentially just going to come down a Northwest team storming in the Southeast. Because the problem was, the Southeast team, they had an interesting idea with the air. I kind of liked that. It was a neat little concept. Set up the air, push in directly from that. But the problem was, they didn't have any way of holding territory. And they kind of gave the game away with the air before they had a chance to build up enough forces to come in and start wiping out all the factories. Because the main thing that would have done it is if, like, the, that entire rapier shot or all the ravens or whatever else could have come in there and taken out all of the metal extractors. If that had happened, then we wouldn't have this army storming in and taking out the Southeast team. But as it stands, there's really not much to say to that because it's like there was no real aggression on the sea. There was no there was some aggression over in the northeast by, by the air, but not a whole lot of damage was dealt meaningfully. Which again is largely because of the fact that the air was spotted early enough that anti-air could be built up before it was going to ever be an issue. So an air rush just did not work. An interesting concept though. At this point, Northwest team just going in for clean, but I think Southeast team, they have a scorpion coming in to try to turn this around. And it is able to get rid of one of the commanders that have been attacking, but it's going to be hit pretty hard by all these scalpels coming in the north. And I don't see the scalpels. I mean, they're going to be threatened. They're going to do some damage, but then there's the ravens coming in here. That is going to be a very dead scorpion as soon as the last raven actually comes in here. No, actually, the scorpions... Seriously, scorpion, you're not making my commentary easier. Well, you are, however, doing a great job not dying, so I'll give you that. You did not die. And there's actually quite a bit of reclaiming. The economy isn't too bad on evenness, so there's... I mean, there's not much hope. But there's theoretically room. Like... Theoretically, theoretically, maybe, and it's starting to pull away, and especially as, no, this caretaker is the only thing, really. If, it's the reclaim field right here that's the important thing. If that was taken, the 3,000 metal or so, that would be a useful way of getting Southeast into position, but that's not what's happening. Quite the opposite, in fact. They are somehow in negative, re how are they in negative reclaim? How is negative reclaim a thing? I've never heard of that. Okay, well, whatever. That's, that's, that's a thing. All right, so, given that, looks like the Southeast team is going to be pretty well just kind of... Yeah, hoops. To put it politely, even though I have sworn on this stream this far. I don't like to do that on the once I go to YouTube, but sorry about that. It was a minor one, but I suppose it was still one. Anyhow, that is going to be... That's going to be a team two that wants to resign. That's the Southeast team that really wants out of this game. But I don't know. This... They're clear... Like, ever, like, okay, I guess Fireblock probably wants to resign because they usually do. But that Scorpion is doing a pretty good job making an argument. Like, they are making a case for why it's possible for the Southeast team to stay in the game. But it's not going to be easy. And I feel like, really, it's just that one... It's just Mookie Man that's trying. Especially the Geo plan for Luke Terrence being destroyed and destroying everything they built up. That has got to be a morale killer. They absolutely... I like Lou Terrence. They are setting up very rapidly. I mean... They have, what, 46 build power? So yeah, that's not an issue for the commander. It's just... This is still turning into a real... Well, a real problem. And it looks like it is going to be enough. Chesty's out. Jose Luis Munoz is out. And Luke Terrence is out as well. So that is going to be the Southeast team throwing in the towel after... What was... A fairly, well, fairly interesting game. I mean, it was an experiment. It was a gambit. I mean, Team 2 wanted to see, hey, can we, or Southeast Team wanted to see, hey, can we set up without using the sea? And the Northwest Team went, are you insane? This is a sea map. In the center of the map, a good 60% of the map is water. Like, what are you thinking? Take the water or die. And the Southeast Team went, no, 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 no. We got the, we got the sky. We got the air. We can take this. And they died. So, I mean... An experiment, an interesting experiment, but an experiment nonetheless. So with that, I'm going to move on to a more typical 1v1. We'll have a couple of those, and then an FFA at the very, very, very end, because that's... Well, that's just how it goes. I mean, I kind of wanted to try something a little bit different, and also I... Not a request per se, but 
before starting, I was kind of said, Hey, are you going to be casting FFA? And I went, you know what? That's not a bad idea. So we'll do that at the very end. But first off, we will have a match between Izzeride and Flipstip on Trojan Hills. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. <laughs> 